Noble Review, Macroeconomics and Microeconomics, for use with introductory college macro and micro courses, as well as the AP macro and micro exams. In this podcast, we'll go over the top 10 concepts that you need to know unit by unit. Noble 3, ADAS and Fiscal Policy, Macro. Number 1. How do you graph an economy in long-run equilibrium using the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model? To graph an economy that is in long-run equilibrium, it is convenient to use the ADAS model. This is a model that illustrates an entire economy's total demand, or all of the spending, and total supply, which is all of the producing, of goods and services. Long-run equilibrium means that the economy is fully employed. The short-run aggregate supply curve, long-run aggregate supply curve, and aggregate demand curve should intersect at the same spot. Price level should be labeled on the y-axis, and real GDP should be labeled on the x-axis. This economy is fully employed and producing at its natural rate of unemployment, where there is zero cyclical unemployment. The long-run aggregate supply curve represents the full employment potential of the economy. Number two, how do you graph an economy in recession using the ADAS model? To graph an economy experiencing a recession in the short run, the aggregate demand curve and short-run aggregate supply curve should intersect to the left of the long-run aggregate supply curve. An economy experiences a recession in the short run when the aggregate demand curve shifts to the left of the long-run aggregate supply curve. This can be caused by a decrease in consumer spending, investment spending, government spending, and or net export spending. Number three, how does the economy correct itself from a recession in the long run? When an economy is in recession in the short run, Classical economic theory suggests that the government should do nothing, or very little, because the economy will correct itself in the long run. In the long run, workers will be forced to take nominal wage cuts as inflation expectations and the cost of production fall. The short-run aggregate supply curve will shift to the right toward the long-run aggregate supply curve until full employment is restored. The price level will decrease real GDP will increase, and the unemployment rate will decrease. Number four, how do you graph an economy with high inflation using the ADAS model? To graph an economy with high inflation in the short run, the short run aggregate supply curve and aggregate demand curve should intersect to the right of the long run aggregate supply curve. Demand pull inflation occurs in the short run when the aggregate demand curve shifts to the right of the long-run aggregate supply curve. This can be caused by an increase in consumer spending, investment spending, government spending, and or net export spending. Number five, how will the economy correct itself from high inflation in the long run? If an economy is experiencing inflation in the short run, Classical economic theory suggests that the government should do nothing, or very little, because the economy will correct itself in the long run. In the long run, workers will demand higher nominal wages as inflation expectations rise. This causes the cost of production to increase. The short-run aggregate supply curve will shift to the left toward the long-run aggregate supply curve until the long-run equilibrium is achieved. The price level will increase, real GDP will decrease, and the unemployment rate will rise. Number six, how does fiscal policy affect the federal budget? Fiscal policy refers to the actions of the government that attempt to shift aggregate demand toward the full employment level of output in the short run. In Keynesian economic theory, the two key tools of fiscal policy are government spending and taxation. A budget deficit occurs when the government spends more than it receives in tax revenue. 
In this situation, the government must borrow money by issuing new bonds to finance its spending policies. This will increase the national debt and lead to the crowding out effect. Two problems associated with expansionary fiscal policies. For more on the crowding out effect, please see Noble 5. A budget surplus occurs when the government receives more money in tax revenue than it spends. This helps to reduce the national debt. Number 7. How does an expansionary fiscal policy work in the short run? According to Keynesian economic theory, an expansionary fiscal policy is appropriate when the economy is experiencing a recession in the short run. The government can increase spending and or decrease income taxes to shift aggregate demand to the right. This will increase real GDP, increase the price level, and decrease the unemployment rate. When the government passes new legislation to increase spending and or cut taxes, it is called a discretionary fiscal policy. An automatic stabilizer, such as a welfare program, goes into effect without the passing of any new laws. During recessions, the government receives less tax revenue and automatically increases certain transfer payments to the private sector. All of the actions associated with an expansionary fiscal policy will move the federal budget toward a deficit. Number 8. How does a contractionary fiscal policy work in the short run? According to Keynesian economic theory, a contractionary fiscal policy is appropriate when the economy is experiencing inflation in the short run. The government can decrease spending and or increase income taxes to shift aggregate demand to the left. This will decrease real GDP, decrease the price level, and increase the unemployment rate. Contractionary fiscal policies move the federal budget balance toward a surplus. This is assuming that tax revenue rises and the government cuts back on its borrowing. Number nine, how does the spending multiplier work? In Keynesian economic theory, the spending multiplier is used to determine how much a change in spending will change output. To calculate the spending multiplier, simply divide 1 by the marginal propensity to save, or 1 over the MPS, or 1 divided by 1 minus the MPC. Once you have the spending multiplier, multiply the change in spending by the spending multiplier. This will give you the change in real GDP. You can use the marginal propensities to determine changes in consumption or savings from a change in disposable income. If the marginal propensity to consume, or MPC, is 0.8, you will spend 80% of any change in income. If the MPS is 0.2, you will save 20% of any change in income. Because disposable income can only be spent or saved, the MPC plus the MPS is equal to 1. Number 10. How does the tax multiplier compare to the spending multiplier? According to Keynesian economic theory, the tax multiplier is calculated using negative MPC divided by MPS. The tax multiplier is less than the spending multiplier because the formula accounts for savings, which is an example of a leakage. A leakage is not directly used for spending in the short run. An injection, such as investment spending, is the opposite of a leakage. If there is an increase in taxes, multiply the negative tax multiplier by the change in taxes to see the potential decrease in real GDP. If there is a decrease in taxes, do the same thing, but ignore the negative sign to see the potential increase in real GDP. Lastly, let's consider something known as the balanced budget multiplier fiscal policy. If the government increases spending, which is an expansionary fiscal policy, and increases income taxes, a contractionary fiscal policy, by the same amount of money, the multiplier is equal to 1 the real GDP will still increase because spending is more powerful than taxes. Bonus. What causes 
the short run aggregate supply curve to shift. The short run aggregate supply curve or SRAS curve can also shift in the short run. Anything that causes resource costs to change will cause a shift in SRAS. Changes in resource prices, inflation expectations, productivity, and tax incentives to suppliers are the most common determinants of the short-run aggregate supply curve. A negative supply shock or sudden increase in the price of a resource will cause a leftward shift of the short-run aggregate supply curve. This causes a higher equilibrium price level and higher unemployment. That condition is known as stagflation. That wraps up this episode of Noble Review's Top 10 Economic Concepts. Now for extra study resources, please visit my website at mrmedico.info. Thanks for choosing to learn with the Noble Review. Till next time.